version of a classic wet fly today. Uh, this is the blue professor, which is essentially the same as the regular professor, but tied with blue floss. I tied, uh, or I rather I did a video a few years back on the professor, and uh, there's a, I'll leave a link right up in the corner right there and down in the description if you want to go and see that. But this is essentially the same. It's tied a little bit different. I think in that one I used um, red rooster hackle fibers for the tail. This I'm using a goose. And then also the wing is tied in on this one, the mallard flank with a little bit different technique. I've used it in other videos. But I also do explain a little bit more about the mallard flank that you get in most shops and what to look for. So. This is a very pretty fly in warm water circles uh, here in the Midwest where I'm usually throwing flies. Blue is a very, very good color. It's very productive for panfish and bass. So I wanted to tie a number of these up to swing this next year and see how they do. That's the Blue Professor. I'll go ahead and get started. start the Blue Professor by putting my hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 3399 in a size 8. It's a standard wet fly hook. Go ahead and debarb the hook. And then I'm going to attach my thread. Because I'm using a blue floss for the body on this, I'm going to start with a white thread. This is a Danville 6 aught in white. Start the thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and then advance down the hook shank, nice touching turns to lay a nice base layer of thread down. That helps the floss from getting much darker when it's riding in the water. I don't have a tag on this. Um, there's no tip or tag right off the end back here. So I'm going to advance my thread just a little bit further down, about halfway between the point and the barb, which is where I want the tail to be. For the tail, the recipe calls for just a scarlet hackle. You could certainly use um, schloppen. You could use a uh, rooster saddle if you want to uh, in a bright red or uh, even duck quill. I'm going to go ahead and use some goose shoulder because I happen to have this out. And I'm going to cut a couple of slips. Oh, probably about four or five barbs in width. Measuring that about a shank length, maybe a little longer. And then I'm going to tie that in with a pinch wrap right on top of the hook shank. Making certain that I don't go too far back down the hook shank because I don't want to start coming down the bend and then pushing that tail in a downward direction. I'll trim away any excess so that this is all the length of the body. And then I'll attach my rib. The rib is just gold tinsel. I'm going to use a Danville size 16 and 18 gold tinsel. I'm going to attach that onto the hook shank with the silver side up. I bring that up under the thread, around to my side, and even down underneath like this. And then I'm going to pull that so that the end of that tinsel is the length of the body. It's just going to help me keep a nice smooth body. The Blue Professor, as I mentioned, is just like the uh, regular Professor, which has a yellow floss body, but it has a blue floss body. So I've got a rayon. This is a four-strand Danville rayon blue floss. I'm going to go ahead and use all four strands of this. This particular floss is kind of interesting because what a lot of people don't realize in fly tying is that the chemicals that are used to dye the different materials actually can react with the materials themselves. So this is why let's just say you're working with some goose shoulder. 
you may find that if you're working with black goose shoulder, it tends to be a little stiffer than say maybe natural white or, or a yellow or something like that. Floss is kind of the same way. The, the blue rayon floss seems to be a little bit thinner. It could be just the spool, I don't know, but it just seems to be a little thinner than um, say another rayon floss. I was working with uh, the, the uh, orange a while back and it just seems to be a little thicker and denser. So again, it could be that spool. Sometimes you have to kind of gauge when you're tying these, whether you're gonna use all four strands or just two strands or, or what. So I'm tying in all four strands and now I'm going to advance my thread forward. I wanna flatten my thread just a little bit this helps just to give me a nice smooth underbody as I work my way forward to tie in those materials. Make certain you're getting nice touching turns as you wrap forward. Not too much pressure because you don't want to twist around the uh, rest of that goose and tinsel and floss so you don't, you don't get a spiral up your hook shank uh, in the underbody. So just enough tension to collect those down along the hook shank. And then we're going to stop about an eye length, just an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Now I'm ready to wrap in the body. I want this floss, all of the strands to be under the same tension as I'm wrapping this forward so I get a nice smooth body. So I'll stroke these around on that first wrap just to make certain that I'm getting them all kind of under the same tension at this forward angle. So now when I'm wrapping these in with a slight overlap, I don't get fibers that are spreading out. Sometimes you do. I have one right there which is really not that big of a deal. Part of that is this time of year, my hands are drier and sometimes micro hangnails on my and dry skin might actually tear at the, the rayon. So sometimes I find that they, they will break off as I'm wrapping that in. For the most part, they're all under the same pressure and that all wraps in really nice and smooth. And I haven't twisted my tail back around to my side. It's still nice and straight down the body. I'm going to wrap my rib in. First wrap goes right around the back to help protect the tail. And then I'm going to get five even space wraps as I work my way up the hook shank. Sixth wrap will come right on the side of the head space. I'll secure that in with two or three wraps and trim away the excess. Now I will go ahead and change over to my black thread. This is also a Danville 6 aught in black. Because now, as I tie in the throat and the head, I want to have the finished head will actually be black. Attach that behind the eye of the hook, winding backwards. I'll then trim away the white thread with the tag of black thread. And then keep winding backwards. This isn't critical right at this point in terms of covering up all those thread wraps. Because as we build the head, little things like that will get... Uh, covered up. Now I'm ready for the throat. The throat on the Professor is just a brown hackle. Um, you, I'm going to use a Schloppen hackle. You can use a rooster hackle if you want. But I'm just going to go ahead and use a Schloppen. I like the Schloppen because it's soft. The feathers, when you, when you strip these barbs off for a throat, they're very soft. And I think they flow and, and provide a little bit more movement for the fly in the water. You want to get a little from both sides of the feather and match those up. And then you'll bring those up underneath the body. I like the ends 
the tips to be just around the barb inside the gap of the hook. I'll do a pinch and loop, pulling up, wrapping backwards three or four turns to secure that. Take a look at it. And that's essentially what I'm looking for, something that fans out like that. And then trim away the excess. Now I will simply clean up the head space a little bit here so we have a nice platform for tying in our thread, or no, excuse me, our wing. I was thinking thread because remember that little white tag of thread that was sticking out there? See, it just got covered up. So now the wing. Now the wing on the Professor is a mallard flank feather. Um, but there's interesting thing. This is just a hairline's big, big bag of mallard flank. But these aren't ideally, they're not any flank feathers in here, actual flank feathers. What these are, are these are belly and or breast feathers. So these things are just pulled off the belly and the, the breast and some somewhat on the flank, but these aren't your traditional uh, flank feathers. You may get one or two that are larger feathers like this that's getting into the flank, but generally these aren't. What that means is, is it's kind of hard to make a nice flat matched wing out of what you get out of this grab bag. I've done a number of different videos on doing these wings um, and there's different techniques and, and I will have you watch some of those, look for any of the wet flies I've done with the mallard wings. Um, but suffice to say, I'm going to basically take the wing here and I'm going to, I'm looking for one that's fairly flat across the top here. Actually, yeah, I had a better one right here. This one's a little bit better. A little flat right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip the rachis out here back about the length that I want the wing. I want to, when I set it up here, I don't want any of this rachis actually in the wing. It's these fibers on the sides that I'll fold together. One thing I wanted to point out before I do that, though, is when you get this bag, you're going to find a lot of different feathers. You're going to have some very, very light feathers like this. And then you'll have some darker ones. These are almost like a teal feather. Then you're going to have some kind of in between. So you've got a variety in terms of trying to put a wing in that maybe has more contrast or less contrast, depending on what you're looking for. Um, so keep that in mind. You're not stuck with only one type of feather that you can use for, for the wing on this. So as I mentioned, I'm going to cut out the rachis right here past the length of the wing. It's about right. And I'm actually going to peel off a lot of this fluff right here. I don't need it. And I'll trim off the end of that feather. And then what I, I am left with is the feather with a little V out. But notice these right here are more or less even and sweep back about the same. Because then when I take the feather and fold all that in, in on itself, what I end up with is making kind of a scrunched up wing, something like this. And if that's too flimsy out on the ends here for you, if you're looking for something that has a little bit more um, substance to it than, or definition, I should say, then by all means, find a feather that is, is going to have a much cleaner end to it, and it won't be broken off as much. But this is what I'm looking for, is just a kind of a post of mallard flank material. And I'm going to tie this in so that the wing is, uh, ends about halfway down the tail. A little pinch and loop. Get that down, put in four or five wraps to secure it, and then I can take a look at how that wing looks. Now, if that's not full enough for you, by all means, get another feather. That one is, is enough for me. If this is going to be a fishing fly, 
I'm not concerned about just how full that is because all of this is going to just sweep back and lay flat and, and get torn up as fish end up uh, hitting this fly. Trim away the excess. And then I will work my way from the eye back, covering up all those butt ends and shaping the head. Careful not to add too many wraps in here. Even if you have just a little bit sticking out there like that, I would not trade off um, more thread wraps to cover that up and, and have the head be too big. Uh, because I'm going to put some black lacquer on this, and so that will cover any of those uh, little tidbits that might still be poking through. Five or six turns of a whip finish. Cut away the thread. And the blue professor is pretty much done. I'll throw some head cement. A little bit on each side. This is a fly tight head cement. It's very, it's much thinner. It will soak down into the thread wraps and help secure all of that as one, as opposed to kind of laying on top and crusting over. Then I'll come back in just a little bit and I'll put a couple layers of black lacquer on that to really make it nice and polished and finished. So there's the Blue Professor. As I mentioned, it is basically the, the regular Professor with blue floss instead of the yellow floss. There was a link, and I'll put a link down in the description, but there was a link in the beginning of this uh, card that I put right up in the upper corner there for a link to that uh, video that I did of the Professor a few years back. A little bit different technique on doing the wings. I've done that in a couple of different videos. Some people have a hard time with the mallard flank. Don't overthink it. Just get something in there. Even if you have to take a large feather, like even something like this, and just strip the barbs off and roll them up, then, then do it. You know, get you a little wing, then you got a wing. It does not have to be, you know, picture perfect. So there's the Blue Professor. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.